I Wear My Sunglasses at Night, written by Paul Astor Cohen, narrated by Nikki. Chapter 4 Over the shoulder of the police officer taking her statement, Nikki could see through the walkway in the distance detectives scratching their heads as they stared down at the pile of billy meat. Okay, ma'am, the officer said, confused, flipping through his notepad trying to make sense of the story. I guess, um, we'll get a hold of you if we need anything else. We sent out an APB on the vehicle and suspect's descriptions. That's all we can, uh, do for now. I'll be in touch. The officer closed the notepad and went to join the confused detective. He paused, turned back to Nikki to ask something, then just shook his head and continued on his way. You sure you're going to be okay, ma'am? A paramedic asked, studying her bandaged hands, feet, ribs, and head. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. I'll let my mummy know you did a good job. She raised her hands, splitting her busted lip as she smiled. The paramedic just stared at her. Thanks again, chief, she said as he walked away. Nikki took a business card the officer gave her and watched him join the other men gathered in a circle, staring down at the bits of Billy. She slid the card into her back pocket and limped back to her room, her bandaged feet muffling a slow applause. When she got to her room, the motel manager was leaning over crime scene tape, surveying the damage inside the room. He had a couple of towels draped over one of his forearms. "'Sorry about this, miss,' he said, placing his hands on his hips. "'This is not very good. Costs lots of money at will.' "'Well, I didn't know those men.' "'No, no, no. You fine. You fine. Here.' He handed her another key along with the towels. "'You stay in room next door. People come by in the morning to fix.' "'Thanks, bud.' Get things and leave room alone. Don't touch. They come and fix. All right, it's not much. Just a bag and jacket. You'll have good night. I cannot believe this happened, the manager said, walking away, mumbling and shaking his head. Open motel, they said. Good idea, they said. Nikki carefully stepped around the shards of broken glass and splintered wood. Limping around the room, she bent down to get Derek's bag, which he left in between the bed and the wall where an imprint of her body now was. But it was gone. She cocked her head to one side, wondering where it had gone. Would kidnappers take his stuff, too? She dusted off the debris from her duffel bag, grabbed the duster, and slowly limped back out of the room. At the doorway, she stopped and looked around one last time, then headed next door. Once inside her new room, she dropped everything and plopped onto the bed face first. She let out a huge sigh, then began to cry. She remembered Derek the day they met. He was such a dork. Dragged out to a club by his friends and feeling a bit awkward as they danced like fools on the dance floor of the club down in Mexico so many years ago. Across the bar, Nikki laughed at his scowl after taking a shot of tequila. That's when he noticed her. She was stone sober and bored. Her friends only invited her because she had just had surgery and couldn't drink, so she became her friend's only clinically prescribed designated driver. You're making that shot look awful, she quipped as she slid down the bar and joined Derek. It's god-awful, he responded, tongue scraping the inside of his mouth in disgust. How can anyone drink this? What is it? Tequila. Nikki laughed and ordered three of them. For my friends, she said, thumbing to the three girls dancing with two of his friends. You from the States? I could be a really pale Mexican. Funny. <laughs> what part? Don't say Arizona. I hate Arizona. She paid the bartender and answered, Oklahoma. She strutted over to her friends on the dance floor and handed them their drinks. She knew he was watching from afar and decided to shake her hips a bit as she shimmied between her and his friends. He left the half-empty shot at the bar and joined the group. A week later, they were having coffee back in their hometown of Stillwater. It took them hundreds of miles in crossing the border to find out they lived ten minutes from one another in Oklahoma. A week after that, they were walking through the park hand in hand. Later, they would take in a late foreign movie at the Independent Cineplex go for jogs, work out together, go shopping at the organic market, sit curled up on the couch eating low-fat popcorn, go to outdoor music festivals and drink light craft beers. 
And there in the cheap motel room, Nikki missed it all so much already.